before I go shaking my tits for the press. I'd like to go see how the professionals do it. Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. You won't run into any reporters. Nobody gets into any fights. This is desync. Nobody drinks too Probably much. Probably desync. Nobody huh. even raises their voice. That's okay. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. That's why I never invite my friends here. Oh wait, no, it's not decent. Never an mind. An for my 60th birthday. I'm just listening it to the other headphone, so it's it's sons. off. Don't and worry they'd about it. I'd rather just hire prostitutes. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time, you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation, or just come by for a drink. Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. It's just that nobody says it out loud. My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy, but I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. She agrees to unbutton her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. Everybody wants something. But we have to control ourselves, or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! No idea how I got so barbaric. <clears throat> so this is this is the police, right? That's that's how you're supposed to say that. This is this is the police. I want to turn these down. I don't know, maybe that's too low. Hold on. How does that sound? Maybe Max is the way to do it. How's that? Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, turn vibration off. I'm not using something that can vibrate, but I hate vibration, so let's pretend um, that's off. Alright, so before I do any of this, I'm gonna tell you this is one of my favorite games ever made I've played this game multiple times before it's so fun for me to just play forever and I of course want to play it on stream as a result so now it's time remove the current save data that's fine as much as I hate to do it I gotta That's the big story, Jack Boyd's resignation. There's a lot of story in this game, to be fair. There's a lot of story. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 
Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. So this is the, the press conference. Your choices don't really matter as far as I'm concerned. Good morning. Yesterday the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise or did you know about it in advance? Um, I've been expecting this bullshit from the mayor. Mayor Rogers is a dishonorable, corrupt politician, and he's been waiting for an opportunity to get rid of me. So true. Do you already know the name of your successor? Who cares? I've done my job, and I'm just about finished with it. Soon my only interest will be cigars and jazz. I frankly don't care who takes my place. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Um. No. He's made up his mind to leave. I don't see anything affecting that decision. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe the police are cooperating with the mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Bullshit. Excuse me, but that's a pile of horseshit. The mafia and the police working together? Maybe they're in cahoots with the aliens? The mafia are a bunch of low-life criminals. How about somebody ask a real question? Now that's ironic because you do end up working with the mafia later in the game, but you'd also get to make a choice. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Um... Possibly. It's often difficult to say what guides policy decisions. Thank you. You're welcome. How's the bat today, Mr. Boy? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. 
Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. <coughs> Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> I know, right? Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. One hundred and eighty days quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. I remember that line. That's a good one. I like that. All right. That has set up the story. We have 180 days before we have to retire. Um, a lot of other stuff happens. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria. And there's more anymore. story, right? There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing, don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eating here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freebird. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows its days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Would you like to receive tips about how the game works? Uh, I'm a 60 year old police chief, a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. Okay, so this is shift B. I guess we're not allowed to mess with them yet. Price is on this one, classic. You know, these are old friends, basically. You know, I get, I get, you can get very attached to these people 
as they come and go. You know, they quit, they get fired, they die. It's, um, there's, there's a lot. Oh, that feels loud. Hold on. Actually, let's see how loud it is. Hold on, let me check. Test? It could be a little shorter. Hold on. Right, I get it. You want me to do this hit and run. A married couple exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot over a homeless man, back over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, and once he saw that he'd hit a bum, he got back in the van and quickly drove away. Hmm. Let's send Sue. Let's send Purdy and Austin because Purdy can carry Austin. You know, Purdy knows what she's doing. And then we got here. A theater manager reports that during a showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater's security guard. All right, well, Yancey can deal with that. Honestly, no. Let's bring Kochi and Price. Because Price needs the training very badly. And Kochi is the one who can do it. You know, you set up some good squads. I think Kochi and Price seem like a good squad to start with. Let's see how the hit and run went. Fender was caught. Officers unharmed. Perfect. Amazing. Austin's already at 100. <clears throat> the fight went fine. There we go. Price getting better. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store made off with their whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fed in the car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is one Janet Brown who lives in the suburbs. Armed robbery? That sounds pretty serious. Let's bring Yancey and Asano onto the case. A brother and sister clash with each other over their deceased father's wills. According to one of the lawyers, we don't dare separate them and our security guard is off duty tonight. Subaki could probably handle that solo. I'm gonna wait though. All right, let's send Subaki and Austin. Just in case, you know? You never know, it could get bad. It sounds pretty tame, but it could get bad. A passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and money. I'll just... Yeah, Purdy doesn't need to go on that one. We'll send Kochi and Price. The vehicle in question is parked right outside the Brown residence. The sound of moaning and laughter can be heard through the living room window. We're gonna shout that the house is surrounded. Amazing. Perfect. Austin and Subaki did a great job. Officers unharmed. Amazing. I'm hoping Kochi and Price do a good job. I could have sent Purdy in retrospect. You know, I was just afraid something else would pop up. Okay, they did good. Thank God. Kochi, my best officer on shift B. Definitely helping a lot. Let's now end the day. Ooh. So, oh, Stovall. What's Aaron? Aaron Stovall? Something Vandal. Oh, he's good. Robbins. It's like Martin Robbins. Samadhi, Grant, Birch, and Birch Jr. Francis Birch, Francis Birch Jr. I know these people. These are my buddies. These are my friends. I know these people.
Used to be when I asked Kendrick Robert to stay Pando, late at the office, maybe? he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Dangerous, dangerous. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, San pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, San killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And San's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. All right. I forgot how much story there was to set. That's that's all very important stuff that just happened. A lot of foreshadowing going on as well. Birch didn't come into work today. No, Birch. Ooh, I have stripes I could give out. Stripes make people better just in general. They give them a, an immediate boost, I think, and also just make them better. I want to give one to Vandal right away. I think he deserves it. And I'll save the other one for the other shift. On the best part of the game, you get to choose the music. Ah, 
they got Chopin on here. Oh, it's amazing. Billabong is really good. Don't You Leave Me Here. That's a classic. Singing Them, I love. Bud Meets Bob, another amazing one. Sweet Ginger Green. Ah, oh, I love these songs. I love every single one of these songs. I'm starting with Sweet Ginger Green. That song's so fun. We received a frightened call from the local cathedral. This morning, the abbot discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols and some have been broken into pieces. Seems there are even marks from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. I don't think this is anything. I don't. Let's just send Grant and say deal with it. What is affairs? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we can move people into shifts, fire them. Info. Janice Grant. I gotta learn Francis Birch. Francis Birch Jr. Who is Roy? Marta Roy, right? Marty Marty Robbins? Martin Robbins? Yep. Robert Vandal? Richard Vandal, right. Aaron Stovall? 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 Aaron Stovall? Yep. Nanami Kochi. Uh, I don't remember Yancey's first name. Buck Yancey. This is Linda Purdy. I don't remember your name. Kin Tsubaki, okay. Uh, it's tip of my tongue. Jill Austin? Yeah! I don't remember Asano's first name. Haruyo Asano, and I definitely don't know Price's first name. Marsha Price, okay. The labor mo- <gasps> Bailey! Oh, I have to get Bailey. She's so good. Hold on. You see, I have bias, because I know these people. I've gotten these people before, and Bailey has done me so well. So let's sign Bailey for Shift B. Oh, and we have a detective slot as well. Right, okay. Let's sign Vickers for Shift B as well. I would love more labor slots. I love that I got Brandy Bailey. She's one of my favorites. And my first playthrough, she was one of my best. You know who else were some of my best? Vandal and Robbins. I love this game. Businessman Harley Jones, looking out the window, saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogans on his new car. Let's have Samadhi, Birch Jr., and Roy all go to that one together. I know there, there are things you probably send, send people to a thing and they just die. So you gotta be very careful. Is the song already over? Oh my god. I mean, I've been messing around too long. Hold on. Let's do the other Pierce Pickering jazz house band, whatever they're called, song. Fender escaped. Oh shit. Okay, I thought that was fake. That's my bad. A waitress named Mila reports that she just served a chicken eddy and a Diet Coke to a dangerous criminal who she'd seen on television this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. I don't think this is real either. Oh my god, okay. I'm making mistakes. I'm making mistakes. I gotta be more careful. I, I haven't been taking these calls seriously. They all sound fake. Give me Grant with Fandal to make sure this goes well. I think it's fake, but I thought the other ones were fake too, and they, they weren't. Well, I, I didn't think the second one was fake, but I thought three officers would do the job, but no. Right. I'm not doing this. Because I think 
I think my officer will leave. I think you, you, you send Roy there and she leaves forever. I, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I saw that one coming. I don't want to send anyone to the nightclub. I think they'll become a bouncer for life. An anonymous call just came in to count clown chain balloons at the skating rink. It's showing crack to teenagers. All right, Stovall and Roy, deal with that. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline is certain to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. That sounds like a job for Vandal and Robbins. Because that sounds pretty dangerous. I just hope my other people come back soon. A clown is seen making balloon animals for the kids. I guess we'll watch the clown. Okay, okay. That worked. Good. I felt like that one needed some good power. Okay, day's over. I could have played that better. I obviously played that very badly. Robespierre. Robespierre. Oh, it's the feminist rally. Oh, shit. I remember all this. Whenever I'm alone at home and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? To get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either. But according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door in his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. Of all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address, phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. 
come to your senses. They'd give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. Laura, if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? As the game pro progresses, you don't get a cutscene every day, but you definitely get a lot this early. Chief, my son came down with a serious illness. I think I better take off work. Sorry, can I go home? Yeah. Yeah, if it's a serious illness, yeah, of course. You gotta, you gotta work, look out for your team. I really want to give Bailey a, sh uh, a stripe. I'm doing it. I know you just joined, Bailey. I have confidence in you. I'm giving you a stripe. We gotta go Chopin today. Love some good Chopin. Right, City Call tells you to fire all the black cops, which I never do. I never do. It's so brutal. I mean, Stovall, Robbins, Austin, they're such good cops, too. They're, like, some of my best. Not Austin, but the other two. Uh, so, no, of course I'm not going to do that. A member of the city's cleaning crew saw an elderly man approaching some expensive cars in the parking lot carrying a long iron rod. The whole street could hear him shouting, Bastards, thieves, bloodsuckers. This feels fake a little bit, but let's send Bailey and Price. I trust Bailey. Black activist Ronnie Moore was found shot outside his home. Vickers is going to lead this one. With Armstrong as backup. A gas station surveillance camera recorded a car that's on the stolen vehicles list. Okay. Kochi can go with Austin and Asano. I trust Kochi. I do. Amazing. Perfect. Price, you're you're developing. I appreciate it. Alright, this is the homicide. I'll read this later. I, I would like the slides first so we can figure out how to solve it. Yeah, I find it better to... Uh, Read those after you already have the slides. Corey Ramsey, mother of several children, has expressed her concerns about a suspicious man wearing bifocal seating on a bench beside a playground. He's been watching the children for over an hour and has taken several photographs of him. I don't feel like this is real either, but let's go for it. Driver's nowhere to be seen for the carjacking. Let's wait at a safe distance for the driver to appear. Amazing. Perfect. Great job. You gotta be careful with things like that. People can die. Amazing. I'm opening Freeburg's first martial arts club in for my exhibition. I want to hold a sparring match where one of my students takes on your toughest cop. After the fight, I'll teach your man a few tricks, something that will help him out on the streets. My toughest cop is Bailey, as we all know. 
Hopefully this doesn't fuck her up. I've, I've invested a lot in her. <laughs> so, I, you know, it's a, it's a gamble to send her on, on this, but I'm hoping it helps her. All right, open this investigation. So, Eric Graham, who was drunk, said they drove by in a sedan and they shot like a machine gun. I didn't see much. Only heard a few muffled shots, the neighbor says. Another neighbor says he got what he deserved. He's been causing trouble for a long time, and recently there's been lots of cursing and carrying on. Stacy Cobb says, I don't remember the car. The neighborhood was quiet. I never heard any shots. Then another neighbor says, the police these days don't do nothing. I almost died myself. I went to buy some medicine. I was nearly hit by some idiot's car. Okay, so car, gun store, amazing. And then we send people to this. What is this? Hold on. Bartender reports that a couple dancers start fighting over tips. A cat fight broke out right on stage. Okay. There's a cat fight on stage, and then there's this. Let's bring Yancey and Austin to this. And the cat fight can go Kochi, Subaki, and Price. Bartender reported the fight has broken out between a patron and the bar's bouncer. The man drunk climbed on the stage while a local singer was performing and tried to sing a duet with her. Uh oh. Chief, I just about nailed the jab a couple times, but he was too fast for me and won on points. I don't really understand all the rules, so I can't keep track of points very well. But he was alright, even showed me a few tricks after the match. I got carried away a little and pulled my back, thinking I can take a day off. Okay, so that was actually good. I, I don't want to do this, but I have to. I need everyone to come back. Hopefully Asana's okay. If she calls for backup, I want people. On the stage are two strippers going at it, and it's going beyond arguing to a full-on cat fight. The bouncer's fast asleep, clearly too wasted to handle the situation. The drunken patrons are happily watching the fight. Let's, let's, let's draw our weapon. They continue fighting, oblivious of the police pre presence. Throw water on them. There we go. I hope Asano's okay. How's the homicide gone? Caught. Amazing. Arrested all suspects. Uh oh. Okay. At least she's not like dead. I'll take offender escaped, you know. It's not ideal, but it happens. Retired police officer Thomas Blaine shoots pregnant woman. I thought she was a suicide bomber. City has no problem with the racists. Excuse me? Why would a man need a barn to store all the stuff you can't bring home? About 30 years ago, back when I was young and interested in farming, I carried all kinds of junk home. After a day in the field, I'd come home with buckets, shovels, dirty boots and clothes, and instantly transform the living room. But even back then, there's something I always kept in the barn. I stopped keeping my pills inside the house because every time I was about to take a triple, someone would knock on my bedroom door. Now they're knocking on my barn door. Well, fine. It's not every day that someone comes to visit your barn. In all the years we worked together, Kendrick never came to visit the house. We drank at bars, went fishing, went to the mountains, even chased off some poachers one time. But he never came for dinner with the family. We never watched football over here. And now he's brought his friends to visit my barn. 
I always try to look unsurprised, like it's an everyday thing to get visitors at the old barn. Especially guests with their own personal bodyguards. But Kendrick is sharp enough to see he's caught me with my pants on backwards. Sorry for the surprise, Jack. We saw you from the car. Figured we'd find you in here. I'm going in for a minute, fellas. These guys will wait outside. How long you been dating the lover boys? They're sans people, Jack. Yeah. So now you're appearing in public with members of the Mafia? Jack, I'm leaving tonight. More like fleeing. Jenny and I are taking the girls and making a run for it. Probably won't be seeing each other again. I've got new documents, a new name, a new life, everything new. The papers say you're still working your last week for the department. I've got to get out today. I won't be getting another chance. Don't know if you noticed, but the whole city is against me. You told your Mafia friends about your plans. Jackie, if I don't fix everything with them in the next few hours, they're gonna kill me. And not just me, my family, my relatives, God, Jack, I don't know who else. They found out that I was planning to run and they demanded that we close our contract today. Your contract, Frank? Really? Is that how you talk now? Maybe you should call in the lawyers to straighten all this out. Now is not the time, Jack, please. I have a commitment to them until the end of the year. If they need an inside line at police headquarters, I can't just give them back the money. That's not how the Mafia works. If I can't find someone I can trust tonight, I'm dead. You know me, Jack. I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't afraid they'd cut my daughters to pieces before sunrise. He's the damn fool who puts his daughters in the crosshairs in the first place. Anyone in my place would have dressed him down good. But I didn't want to pile it on. Fate's already got this guy's soul in the grinder. I gotta help him. Give him my phone number. Tell him it's done. Don't call me. Don't come to work today. I don't want to see or hear from you again. Time for you to go. Jack. I... Get the fuck out of my nice cozy barn, Frank. <clears throat> At the time, I was trying not to think about what just happened. It was almost too much to take in. I'm probably the most popular police chief in the history of the city, and I have to admit, I've thought about that more than once, sometimes with a little pride, even. In one of the features they wrote about me in the papers, they said it pretty plain. He catches the criminals. Believe me, high praise like that is unheard of in Freeburg, especially for a cop. And here I am, the person who catches criminals and I've agreed to help the Mafia, or I'll come home to a bag stuffed with my kids' body parts. Right before the last hammer falls. Hey, remember that cop who caught criminals? It turns out he was a Mafia bitch. And all for the sake of a greedy, corrupt cop who should have fled the country years ago. That sound right to you? My neighbor died and his wife asked me to help with the funeral arrangements. Can I take the day? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Let's play Bud Meets Bob. It's a good one. I'm excited for when we can buy more music. But I do love this starting music as well. Tomorrow's the deadline. I'm not doing it. Sorry. Thank you for my salary. Every morning there's a dirty, piss-soaked bum sleeping at the cafe. The man refuses to go away and growls at anyone who approaches, scaring all the customers. Okay. Oh, no, 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 hold on. Stovall can go with Roy. I trust you to carry Roy. I do. I 
A witness looked on from a window while an armed man with a stocking on his head entered the nearby liquor store. You can send SWAT to this one. Vandal, Robbins, Grant, Birch. Send the whole squad. And nothing urgent better pop up while they're busy, like this. A hot dog vendor reports that he saw two Elvis impersonators grappling right there on the sidewalk. They're swearing in Spanish and beating each other with microphone stands. Ooh. I... I would like another officer slot, please. Or, oh yeah, you can ask for everything. Let's just ask for an officer slot for now. This went well. It's good. If only Birch Jr. was here. Hmm. Stovall's not getting back in time. Shop is two exit from which a few people have already fled. We gotta drive the car through the window. The stick of man noticed the police presence and took the cashier hostage. He's holding his gun to the hostage's head, shouting back over or I'll blow his goddamn face off. Meanwhile, the cashier is yelling in an unknown language. Take aim. The robber grows visibly nervous. Don't shoot, please. I just need the money. I'll take a little bit and go. No one was hurt. Let's say this, but then obviously we're lying and we take him anyway. Wait, what? We were lying! Huh? We were lying! I guess they don't have that nuance in this game, huh? Shooting contest, right. And someone to keep an eye on things. I need to make City Hall happy, so I will do that. At a gallery exhibition entitled Sex Operation, a gang of young people in ski masks forced their way in and began smashing exhibits, shouting, We don't need sh this shit in our city. Ooh. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't send my finest marksman. Honestly, I'm, I'm sending hella people to this, and uh, I'm doing this, too. This investigation has started. We will come back to that. Obviously, they escaped, yeah. You know, this game's harder than I remember. This is very hard. Okay, that was successful, which is good. I mean, it better have been. We sent all our best people. I remember this one. I don't think it's this, though. I think you might need more. It's, um, he's there, and then... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, because you can get more frames... Okay, he taught them how to shoot. That's good. That's a thing as well. You wait for this. A guard went out for a smoke and saw a teenager writing obscenities on the wall. I chased up out of a tree. You can take it from here. Let's take Vandal and Samadhi on this one. And then Stovo and Robbins on this one. And hopefully that's it for the day. We don't have any more people. Everyone's busy. Thank you. That's, that's tough. That's tough. Game gets hard fast. Okay, good. We arrested all suspects. Amazing. Okay. 
Okay, that also went great. Perfect. Looks like tomorrow's gonna be a long day, more like the first of a lot of long days. There's just too much going on. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, I know. You don't gotta tell me. 